This example includes configuration files to help you record and replay using the RTI recording service. The RTI recording service lets you record live data from your system and replay that data later. When you replay the data, you can replay at the same rate it was recorded, faster or slower. I'll start by showing you how to replay data from the database that I have pre-recorded and that you've downloaded with the example. First, open up a console window and navigate to the directory where the example is installed on your system. Then from there, change directories into example code resource replay. Inside this directory, we've pre-created configuration files for you to record new data or to replay data that has already been recorded. I've also included a pre-recorded set of data that's inside of flightdata.dat. So to start out, I'm going to start by replaying the data that's already in this database, and then I'll show you how to record data of your own. In order to replay data, you must run the RTI replay script that's inside the RTI recording service installation directory under scripts. When you run the RTI replay script, you have to pass it the parameters dash CFG file. And also the configuration name. I'm going to run it without the configuration name so you can see which configurations exist. And you'll see we have default configurations and also one called flight data replay. So if you run with CFG name set to flight data replay, this is going to replay the data that's inside this database and it's going to replay it on repeat. So you'll get to see that tracks will arrive and they'll be sent for a while and then they're going to start to, to pause and then be repeated. So once you've started the replayer, the next thing to do is to actually open up the track GUI so you can visualize this data that's being replayed. And here we can see quite a number of tracks that are all flying in and arriving and landing at SFO. This is all the pre-recorded data that I created previously and stored in this database file. So this is the same as data that you yourself could record if you want to. The next thing you can do is you can actually replay this at a faster rate if you want to. To increase the rate of playback, you can edit the configuration file that's in the replay directory. So you can edit replayconfig.xml. I have it open in WordPad. And you can see here under time control, there's a rate. And right now it's set to one, so it's replaying at the original rate, but you can increase that rate. Here I'm going to set it to five, and we'll see that data flows even faster. So here we have the flights arriving and landing at SFO at five times the rate that they were originally doing this. So now let's talk about how to record data of your own. To record new data, instead of running the RTI replay script, you must run the RTI record script. 
This is also located in the RTI Recording Service installation directory under Scripts. Now, instead of choosing the Replay Config XML file, choose the Record Config XML file, and the configuration name is now Flight Data. Notice that here I've also started my flight plan generator and my radar generator, so I have data that can be recorded. So here I start recording. And if I look inside the directory where I have been storing this data, I can see it's created a flightdata.dat10 file, so it's a new file and I can see that it's steadily increasing in size also. So I'll record data for a little bit, wait until it gets to be a little bit larger of a file, and then we'll replay this new data. So here I've run the replayer, and it looks a little bit interesting because it's shifting back and forth between data sets here, so it has some old data and some new data that's appearing on the screen. But really what it's doing is it's just reading through one set of track updates, and it's showing those on the screen, and then it's switching over to another set that all have the same unique identifiers, and so it looks like the tracks jump around a little bit. Now if you want to, you can set up your record file so it actually overwrites the old one instead of creating more than one. Or you can delete the old one before you start recording and have a completely new data set. That's up to you, but really it's very simple. We've just replayed the existing data that came with the example and then we recorded a new data set and we can see both of these at the same time.